Well, good evening, everybody. How are we doing this Christmas Eve? Oh, I heard some over here, but I didn't hear any over here. How are y'all doing over here? There we go. We're alive. I'm excited, y'all. First of all, Merry Christmas or Christmas Eve. I want to invite you guys to stand with us as we begin our time of praise and worship. singing tonight. Merry Christmas to all of you. Uh, join me, if you will, as we pray together. Father, thank you so much for our time together tonight. What a special night. What a special time it is, Lord, to focus on you and not just your birth. Yes, we celebrate your birth this time of year, but God, we know that you didn't remain that baby in a manger. You grew a sinless man, perfect man. You were crucified as the Lamb of God. You were buried and three days later, you rose again and ascended to the Father. And now, Lord, as we lift up our offerings to you and our prayers and our petitions, Lord, and our praises, you sit at the right hand of the Father and bring them to him. Lord, we thank you. We praise you tonight. 
And I just pray that everything that's done here, Lord, would bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's good to see you here tonight. If you're our guest tonight, we want to welcome you especially. Uh, I, I got to meet some of you before the service began. Some of you I haven't gotten to meet yet. We still have some coming in, so it's good to see you and good to have you here. We would love to have a record of your visit, especially if you, if you don't have a church home around here. If you do, praise God. I'm glad you're with us tonight, but I'm glad you have a good church home. If you don't, uh, we're running a special this month only. Three months, no tithing if you join before the end of the year. No, that, yeah, good. Some of you got that. <laughs> but on the, on the end of your bulletin, you've got a little tear-off slip here. You're welcome to fill that out and just hand it to me at the end of the service. or uh, I'll be around, and I'd love to get it from you, and we'll keep you informed as to what's going on here. If you'd like to talk, know more about us or know about, more about the Lord or anything like that, we would love to meet with you and talk with you. So it's good to have you here tonight. Home folks, it's good to have you here as well. A large number of our people are traveling tonight or away with families. Some are shut in because they have been exposed and uh, they're having to quarantine right now. And so uh, we want to think of them tonight too. I hope they're joining us on live stream. And for those of you who are joining us on live stream tonight, we welcome you too. You worship along with us too. Just like you're, you're not at home, just like you're right with us. So we hope that you'll do that. I can't wait to continue uh, singing praises to the Lord tonight, and I hope you'll join us too. So Joseph, how about you lead us in some more? Why don't y'all stand as we continue in our praise and worship?
Christ was born. Oh, night divine. Oh, night. Oh, night now, beginning with the last Sunday in November and leading up to today, actually tonight, and ultimately tomorrow, Christmas, we've celebrated the Advent season. Sadly, some in our uh, tradition aren't that familiar with Advent, but it's basically a time of preparation, preparing our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, our lives for the coming of the Messiah, the Christ. And uh, we do this just symbolically to represent, each week representing something new. The first week, the hope we have in Christ. Then the peace we have in Christ. Then the joy we have in Christ. And the love that we have in Christ. But the most spectacular, the most fantastic candle that we can light on this is the one that makes all the others possible. And this is just a symbolic act. But we light the center candle tonight because it represents... Not a thing, not a religion, not a tradition, but the person of Jesus Christ himself. Because you see, there is a huge difference between religion and being a Christ follower. Christ follower and Christianity is about what God has done for us already. 
what price God has already paid for us to be able to know true hope and peace and love and joy. And it's only through Jesus Christ. Religion is man striving to get to God. Very different, isn't it? Well, tonight, it's our pleasure to really celebrate the fact that in Jesus Christ we have life. We have everything. In fact, Jesus said himself that uh, he's come to give us life in John 10.10. 10. In fact, in contrast to the thief who comes to kill and to steal and to destroy, Jesus says, I'm come that you might have life. Life in abundance. And when we don't know Christ, we only know the religious do's and don'ts. And we see these checklists and we see all these things that we must observe or we think we must observe to be right in his eyes. When in actuality, he has said this himself in the same gospel of John in the New Testament. In John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. So it's only through Jesus that we have this way. And it's Jesus we're celebrating tonight. I love family. I love traditions. I love the hot ham and Swiss cheese sandwiches we have every Christmas Eve. I love the streusel topped blueberry muffins and bacon we have on Christmas morning every single year. I like all the traditions that we have and things like this. But it's not about family. It's really not. I hear that all the time. Christmas is all about family. It's a wonderful byproduct of Christmas. But Christmas is not all about family. Christmas is not all about traditions. Christmas, Christmas is not all about the children and celebration or Santa or anything else. Christmas is about Jesus Christ. And he, not that or it, he is who we focus on tonight. Uh, if you've heard... Some of these before, just grin and bear it and act like you haven't. <laughs> but I love to search the internet <laughs> for stories about what children have said at Christmas time or uh, letters that they have written to Santa or something like that. And I found some of these. You may have heard some of them before. These things go through the internet like crazy. But I love them. They're just so funny. One says, Dear Santa, you didn't bring me anything good last year. You didn't bring me anything good the year before that. This is your last chance, signed Alfred. <laughs> this one says, Dear Santa, there are three little boys who live at our house. There's Jeffrey, he's two. There's David, he's four. And there's Norman, he's seven. Jeffrey's good some of the time. David's good some of the time. Norman is good all of the time. P.S. I am Norman. <laughs> if you could use one word to describe Christmas, what would you use? Just shout it out real quick. Jesus? I missed it. Joy. Emmanuel, God with us. Hope. hope. What I hear? Hope. That's right. What else? Love. Love. Happiness. Happiness. Sure. We, we got a lot of words that come to our mind at Christmas time. But some people don't use these words in referring to Christmas. It is amazing some of the griping you hear around Christmas time. And you hear words like, there's such busyness. What a headache. I'll be glad when it's over. It's so expensive. It's so bothersome. And a lot of people, Christmas is just another day. It's just a more expensive day than usual. And it's a lot more trouble. I, I've heard uh, even Christians use these words to describe this day at times that really is intended to be set aside to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, we all know that it very, very likely was not on December 25th, but you can't get hung up on that. 
It's a day we set aside. It's like uh, children we know who've been adopted that especially some of the international adoptions and they have no idea what their birthday is and so you know the day that they assign to celebrate January 1st it's usually January 1st set aside as their birthday because they don't know so they just set that day aside and we set this day aside to celebrate Jesus and it's sad that an event that brought so much joy in heaven and on earth should bring so little joy to us today and you see, this is the difference that we're going to see between knowing the person of Jesus and celebrating him and who he is and what he is and what he represents, or just being religious. Religion is going to leave us empty. Religion is going to leave us frustrated. Religion is not going to help you when life comes at you in the wrong way sometimes but Jesus is a person and Jesus is real in our culture in the last few years you know this that Christmas has almost become uh, one of the it, well it used to be George Carlin used to do a routine about seven dirty words you can't say on television I don't think there's seven anymore I'm not sure there's any but Christmas has almost gotten to be one of the dirty words that you're not supposed to say anymore. We have holiday trees. We have winter breaks. We have solstice celebrations. We, we even heard on our favorite, uh, in fact, if you're tired of all the broadcast news and stuff like that in the morning, we gave it up. We just don't even watch it anymore. But if you're tired of that, go on YouTube Type in Rick and Bubba live. And I promise you, it will make your day. But we were listening to some of the best of Rick and Bubba today. They're off during the holidays now. But we were listening to some of the best of Rick and Bubba this morning. And they were talking about this county, Montgomery County, Maryland. Nobody here is from Montgomery County, Maryland, are you? Good, because I'm fixing to really slam your county. Uh, but the mayor of Montgomery County, Maryland, Maryland has called off the Christmas celebration in town because two families protested that were offended by the celebration of Christmas in their town. And I think sometimes we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg of what could happen. When you get so politically correct that everything is politically wrong, it just becomes a web that we all get tangled up in. Well, Rick and Bubba were trying to call the mayor on the phone. And the receptionist answered the phone. And, of course, the mayor wasn't available. <laughs> but to go figure. But the receptionist said, and they said, well, so you mean you're not going to even have, you know, what are you going to do with your Christmas tree? You're not going to light the Christmas tree? And she says, we don't have a Christmas tree. He said, what do you mean you don't have a Christmas tree? He said, no, it's not a Christmas tree. It's, it's, a, it's a tree. What was it, Kim? Did my wife leave? <laughs> it, it was, I can't see, I got light shining in my eyes. You got to holler. Uh, but it was, it was some kind of celebration of holiday lights. And it was decorated red, white, and blue. I'm sure not for America. But it was, that would be offensive to some. But it was, it was a celebration of holiday lights. And it had red, white, and blue on it. But they couldn't say Christmas. And they couldn't sing Christmas carols, and they couldn't celebrate Christmas in the traditional way. It had to be a celebration of holiday lights. So Christmas has almost gotten to be a bad word at times. Again, holiday trees, it frustrates the daylights out of me. I will go shop extra in stores that tell me Merry Christmas. Stores that tell me hoppy, happy, hoppy holidays. Hop, hoppy holidays. <laughs> yeah, happy holidays. I'm going to get English down one day. Uh, but stores that tell me happy holidays, I correct them every time. I know, I can't help it. It ain't going to do any good, but I do. I correct them. I say, holidays? Which holiday are you talking about? It's, you mean Christmas? Merry Christmas, just say it. But according to even some of our government leaders, we're not a Christian nation, according to them. We were never founded on biblical principles. And it's amazing how you can rewrite history without looking at original history. You know what I'm saying? Well, with that in mind, I'm going to share you a politically correct Christmas greeting. 
for our post-Christian times. It goes like this. Please accept with no obligation implied or implicit my best wishes for an environmentally conscious, socially responsible, low-stress, non-addictive, gender-neutral celebration of the winter solstice holiday practiced within the most enjoyable traditions of the religious persuasion or secular practices of your choice with respect for the religious slash secular persuasions and or traditions of others or their choice not to practice religious or secular traditions traditions at all in addition we wish you a fiscally successful personally fulfilling medically uncomplicated recognition of the onset of the generally accepted calendar year but not without due respect for the calendars of choice of other cultures whose contributions to society have helped make America the great land that it is not to imply that America is necessarily greater than any other country or is the only America in the Western Hemisphere and without regard to race creed color age physical ability religious faith or choice of computer platform <laughs> exactly Declan <laughs> yeah people have gotten a lot out of focus a lot of historical facts even gotten a lot out of focus of what tolerance means and what's considered politically correct um, even if it stomps on the rights of millions of Christians instead of getting mad this Christmas Eve I want to suggest to you how we can get things in proper focus and some of you have, who say to me from time to time boy that message really spoke to me today I want to tell you every message I preach I preach it to me and if it fits somebody else we'll praise God but I need at this time of the year, because I love a lot of the things about Christmas, but some of the things really get under my fingernails. And it's not the things directly related to Christmas, but the surroundings of our world climate and political climate and all of that just really dig under my fingernails. So I need to help get things in proper focus. And I want to help you get things in proper focus this Christmas season. You might be uh, not be able to focus, uh, to adjust the focus of anybody else but you can for yourself when I do marriage counseling I always try to make it clear because usually one spouse or the other is trying to get me to change the other person and I always have to let it be known you can't change the other person and I can't change the other person but you can change yourself and it's a whole lot easier to change yourself than it is to change somebody else well, let's work on our own Christmas. How about that? Let's get it in focus. This Christmas celebration can be a great time of joy. I don't care how broke you are, how busy you are, or anything. Because joy is like love. It is not merely an emotion, but a lot of times it's a decision. And I, can believe, I believe you can be as joyful as you want to be and as joyful as you will allow the Lord to let you be it's all where you choose to put your focus so if you really want to have joy this Christmas season let me suggest three things to you tonight three things only and then I'm done first thing focus on Jesus now I, I you already know where I'm going j-o-y Jesus others you you've heard it before you say oh give me a break what a cliche I've heard that so many times it is a cliche but I'm gonna tell you there's a lot of wisdom in this cliche and I want you to follow along with me as we just point to how we can refocus our own lives during this time of the year first again is focus on J Jesus in my favorite Christmas TV special for those of you who stalk me on faith I mean follow me on Facebook um, uh, you, you know I put some pictures up the other night of watching the Charlie Brown Christmas special. It was on PBS. I think the networks did away with it this year, but it was on PBS. I, I love it. Every time I watch it, it's like the first time all over again. I just absolutely love it. That and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. No, not the Jim Carrey version. Sorry, you millennials. I'm sorry. 
I like the original of Boris Karloff's voice and everything from the 60s, the cartoon. But Charlie Brown, in the midst of the, of the Charlie Brown Christmas special, he asks, you know, he gets the little messed up Christmas tree and he feels sorry for the Christmas tree and they're all poking fun at him and saying what a blockhead he is and how stupid he is for getting this ugly Christmas tree. It'll never look at anything. What a failure he is. And he finally just asks, he said, does anybody know what Christmas is all about? And Linus goes out to center stage. You remember the part? He goes out to center stage with his blanket and he recites the story of Christ's birth directly from Luke chapter 2 in the Bible. And that really put that in perspective on that show, but it puts it in perspective in our lives because I think sometimes we've forgotten that Christmas is not primarily about us. It's not primarily about our family. It's not about friends. It's not even about church, and it's not about presents. Christmas is about him. It's about Jesus. We say this He's the reason for the season. You know, we have all these little cliche bumper stickers we put out and ugly sweaters we wear at Christmas and things like that. He's the reason for the season. But what does that mean? We got to focus on him. One year, a Christmas uh, afternoon visitor asked a little girl named Ruth. She was about five years old. Goes up to her real sweet and bends down to her and says, Honey, did you get everything you wanted for Christmas? And after a little bit of hesitation, she just looked at him and she said, not really, but then again, it's not my birthday. Hello. It's easy to get wrapped up, so wrapped up in the celebration of Christmas and the traditions and the family and the food that we forget who it is and what it is we're to be celebrating. Like I just said, the world does that. You have to say Happy Holidays or Merry Xmas. Or we have the Jewish celebration of Hanukkah and a whole side topic there. I really don't understand why Christians who are a branch of Judaism, really, our Messiah is Jewish, came from Jewish tradition. I, I really don't understand why we don't celebrate some of the wonderful Jewish traditions that are out there too. The holiday of lights, the miracle of the oil and the lamps. And, uh, but the Jews have the celebration of Hanukkah. Uh, African uh, celebration of Kwanzaa. And you can say those words, though, and it's okay. But even without buying into the world's ways, you can still forget about what Christmas is all about by simply forgetting Jesus or letting Jesus get overshadowed by everything else going on in your life. If you're a Christian, focusing on Jesus means that you not only remember the baby in the manger, but you remember the Savior on the cross, and most of all, you remember the Savior in your heart, in your life. You remember this baby grew up. As I said earlier in my prayer, he went to the cross, died for our sins, rose again to give us a new life, and lives today interceding for us. Look at Galatians 2, verse 20. Love this verse. Paul writing here, and Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Now, not literally at this time, but he's saying basically he's giving up his life for the life that Christ has for him. He says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So not only was Jesus born in Bethlehem, but by faith and by his Spirit, he lives in me, and if he lives in you, and you follow him today, that can bring you joy, no matter what your circumstances are. Second focus, you ready? Others, others. In Acts 25, it says, and I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus, it's more blessed to give than to receive. And a lot of the people at Christmas time say, ha! <laughs> right. You know, there is something good about getting older. <laughs> it's not the bone spurs in my heel at the moment, and it's not my left knee at the moment, and it's not the twitch in my back from the last two or three days. Those things come with getting into your 60s and getting a little bit older. But there is one thing that is good about getting a little bit older. 
You got so much stuff, you don't really need anything anymore. And when you got so much stuff, you don't really need anything anymore, then that doesn't bring you near as much joy as giving somebody something you think will be a fun blessing for them. And Jesus, in his words, has tried to get us to see that over and over again. And focusing on Jesus will help us develop that kind of attitude that he's told us in his word will bring us joy. And Paul is, 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 is quoting here, or uh, uh, Luke is actually quoting here Jesus to, to point out the, the joy of generosity. Christmas is the time that we celebrate the most wonderful gift God's given us, Jesus. His focus was on giving to the world. Think about it. What's the, probably the very first Bible verse you ever learned? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him would not but have everlasting life. Joy doesn't come from getting all we can get from others, but in giving all we can give to others. I know that sounds like a cliche that you hear year after year at Christmas time, but it's really true. And I can't change the truth of that just for the sake of trying to dodge a cliche. It's true. If you want to know joy at Christmas, then discover the joy of giving. Jesus said, Whatever you do to the least of these, you do for him. If you want joy this Christmas, find somebody in need. And in the name of Jesus Christ, give to them your time. Give to them your treasures. There are a lot of lonely people in this world. There are a lot of needy people in this world. And the Holy Spirit will show them to you if you're willing. If you're willing to look for them. The Bible says that you'll find joy there by focusing on others instead of yourself. And finally, yeah, there is a, an aspect of focusing on yourself. It's not wrong. There's a sense in which we are to focus on ourselves. Your own attitudes determine whether or not you're going to experience joy this year. But I'm telling you, from personal experience, you can let Stress, worry, unforgiveness, or discouragement just rob you of the joy of Jesus in your life like that. Everybody struggles sometime, right? But understand this. Attitude is not automatic. Just when you become a Christian or begin to follow Christ or trust him in your life, it doesn't mean all of a sudden you wake up in the morning and just love everybody and smile at everything going on. And when anybody does anything wrong to you or something doesn't go your way, you just giggle and laugh and love them and want to hug them. And it doesn't work that way. You choose to allow these attitudes to rule you or not. How do I know? Been there, done that. And also because the Bible commands us not to allow these things to rule our lives. And God wouldn't command us to do what we cannot do in his strength. Let's look at these things. Worry and stress. Anybody in here ever dealt with worry or stress? Yeah, that's what I thought. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. I've said this before. I want to say it again to you tonight. One of the things that I fell at over and over and over again. Yes, I said it. I fail at this over and over and over again. When worry or stress comes into my life, my first reaction, I wish I could say that my first reaction every time is to hit my knees and pray. But it's usually not. I wish I could say my first reaction is to call a, a, another elder in the church and say, Hey, brother, will you join me in praying for this? And let's just take it to God and let him work it out. No, it's not my first response either. My first response is, in my own power, in my own mind, in my own way of thinking, I try to fix it. I try to figure out the solution. I worry about what's going to happen if I don't solve it. 
I put all that weight on my shoulders and think, if it's going to be, it's up to me. And I bought that lie. But the older I get and the more I do find my way getting back to this, at the end of my personal struggles of trying to figure out the solutions to things myself and realizing I don't always have solutions. And when I do think I have solutions, they're usually not the best ones. And when I get to the end of that rope with worry and stress, and I finally do take it to God, and, and God, 99% of the time in his way, and, and I say 99% of the time because the other 1%, he's doing it too. I just don't always see it. Does that make sense? I believe God answers our prayers 100% of the time. It's just, not, it's just not always what I expect. But God will take care of things. And he'll deal with the worry and stress, and then I feel like an idiot. I'm sitting there, I'm going like, well, why didn't I take this to him in the first place? So can I challenge you to take your worry and stress to Jesus first? Second, unforgiveness. Hmm. Ephesians 4.32 says, and be kind one to another. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. <sighs> Unforgiveness is tough. But I'm telling you, you're the one that's going to lose. You're the one that's going to lose because it's going to eat away at you. And, and it's going to give you acid reflux going to give you heart palpitations it's going to raise your blood pressure it's going to cause you to dream about it and wake up all frustrated in your dreams and it's going to eat at you you say well when they come to me i'll come to them it's not the way it's supposed to be as followers of christ we take our unforgiveness and we give it to god but we also give it to the one that needs that forgiveness or we ask for forgiveness when there's unforgiveness blocking that relationship and we initiate it and I'm telling you for also from personal experience unforgiveness will eat your cake so forgive as Christ has forgiven you and he says well but they don't deserve it who in here deserved Christ's forgiveness? Did you think about that? And finally, discouragement. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16, 17 says this. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work the fact is you can be full of faith or you can be full of doubt you can be full of the joy of the spirit of god or you can be full of the woes of the world consider your thoughts listen to your words watch your actions and ask yourself this do I have the joy of the Lord or am I wallowing in the mud hole of my own tears? <coughs> I've gone to a lot of parties in my life. <laughs> Sounds odd to say here, doesn't it? I've gone to a lot of parties in my life. Oh, I'm not talking about other people's parties. I'm talking about my own. They're called pity parties. I invite myself to pity parties sometimes. Do you ever do that? And you know what? I kind of enjoy going. Because I can think of all the ways that people have done me wrong or said things wrong or offended me or hurt me. or I can get real sensitive if I want to. And I lose at that every time, just as I do with worry and stress, just as I do with unforgiveness. Discouragement along these lines, all of these things, will eat your cake and we'll have a pity party and the joy of the Lord will go right past us. Vance Havner 
great preacher evangelist made this statement once. I really love it. It says, Christmas is based on an exchange of gifts. The gift of God to man, his unspeakable gift of his son, and the gift of man to God when we present our bodies a living sacrifice. Listen, you are the only person who can decide whether or not you're going to be joyful this year. God has a gift for you this Christmas. It is the joy that you unwrap when you take for yourself the gift of God's Son, Jesus Christ, to be your Lord, to be your Savior, your Redeemer, to be your entrance to God himself. As Jesus said that I told you earlier, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Let me reverse it and say that in the positive instead of in the negative. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And you can come to the Father God through me. And Jesus tells us that now. You know what that means? It means joy. But it means forgiveness. It means the guilt is gone. We don't have to carry it anymore. But you don't know what I've done, Pastor. Sadly, I've probably done it myself. And if I haven't done it in act, I've done it in thought. And we're all guilty. Jesus came to forgive us. What a gift. Jesus came to show us God's love. What a gift. And Jesus came to offer us this gift of God's grace totally for free. Unmerited favor for free. But we've got to unwrap it. We have to accept it. And we have to use that gift of his grace. Will you do that? Join me as we pray together right now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would show us, Lord, what it means to know you in full, to know your forgiveness, to know your love, to know your mercy and your grace, Lord. Oh, dear God, I pray that not one person would walk out of here tonight not knowing you. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would deal with each and every person here tonight. Show us what the needs are in our lives, Lord, of taking a back seat to you in our lives, of taking ourselves out of the role of fixer and redeemer and trying to earn our own salvation or forgiveness somehow by being good and just help us to see that we need to just trust you because you've already done it. Dear God, we love you. We celebrate you. We thank you. And now, Lord, I pray that the peace of God would just be with us all. As we think of your wonderful gift even now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In just a second, Joseph's going to lead us with our praise band in the familiar old Christmas hymn, Silent Night. As we sing this, I want you to notice something. I'm going to take my candle here. And on the person of Christ, represented by the Christ candle. I like this candle. Now I'm going to ask you to stand up right where you are. And as you stand up, there's one thing that you still notice in this room, how dark it is. Right? Right? And I want you to think about something. When we go outside of the walls of this body of believers here, and we go into the world and sometimes, sadly, into our own families or something, there's people that are in a lot of darkness. There's people who have a lot of need. And I'm not just talking about poor people needs. Sometimes some of the wealthiest people have some of the deepest needs. And we carry the light of Jesus Christ. What a good news this Christmas. The light of the gospel, the good news of Jesus, 
that he came, he lived a perfect sinless life. He died when we should have been the ones to pay for our sins. But he rose again the third day. That we might have life. He defeated sin and death and the grave and made it possible for us to know that victory. I want you to watch what happens when just a few of these begun, begin to be lit and start lighting down to the side of you right here let me go over here just take a second to look at how the light's beginning to spread See what's happening? As the light is being spread, the darkness is going away. Remember that tonight, at Christmas, and all throughout the year. There's a lot of darkness around us, and we can get depressed about that, or we can be excited by the fact that we know the light of Jesus Christ and it is on us Christians to let the whole world know that Jesus lives he's real and he gives us light and life life here and life hereafter God bless you sing along with us as Joseph leads us Christ the Savior is born. Amen. Celebrate Jesus. Merry Christmas. God bless all of you. Good night. God bless. Lights, please. Thank you for joining our worship this week at Tiga K Baptist Church. 
located at 1875 Gold Hill Road. If you would like more information about what it means to be a Christian, or if you would like to know more about our church, please feel free to contact us at 803-548-2600 or email us at tim at tkkbaptist.org. Again, thank you for being with us today. We hope you will join us again next week. God bless you.